Hello everybody, welcome to the IMO uh, Problems and Solutions playlist. This is an overview of uh, the playlist, what the uh, videos are about and so on. Uh, let's start by uh, first describing what the International Mathematics Olympiad is, right? So it is an international uh, math contest, arguably the most prestigious contest um, uh, for high school students. Um, every year, the or, uh, it's been organized since 1959, and every year uh, it is uh, administered at a different country. In general, each country uh, send uh, six students to that contest, uh, which is a two-day contest. Uh, each day, uh, you will be asked three questions and given uh, four and a half hours to solve these uh, three essay-type questions. So why uh, I created this playlist? Initially, it started as a personal project. I was planning to do it as for my own use only, so make it private actually. But later on, I said I I realized why not benefit others, especially uh, anywhere on, around the world where people do not have access to uh, good resources or uh, they they have access to limited resources, I should say. Um, so this playlist is useful because it is uh, it is uh, the format is uh, a video format. It's some some of us uh, have a better grasp of the subject when presented in that fashion. Um, so uh, next, uh, who is the intended audience? Uh, in particular, the uh, I would say the people in the U.S. who has been fresh out of the eighth grade. Uh, and they, they had a more or less some math counts experience and now they want to test their skills, uh, problem solving skills for in an Olympiad setting. But at the same time, uh, anyone who has genuine interest in solving math problems, huh? uh, improving their problem solving skills in math and logic, um, they are more than welcome, obviously. I hope they are. Uh, they will also benefit as I do. Um, so what is the format of the playlist? Uh, each uh, problem from different years. So for each year, I have six uh, videos basically. So each problem is one video. Uh, at the beginning, when I started the videos, I was planning to have it like limited in ten minutes. But some problems are so deep. Uh, I have a few uh, videos which uh, I solve the problems in more than thirty minutes. But the general idea is uh, you will see uh, the problem on the screen and then i would recommend basically that you pause the video and spend a good amount of time when i say a good amount of time i i, I really feel that the minimum amount is should be an hour so make sure to have spent at least an hour thinking on the problem before you even begin uh, watching the solution that's crucial so this one hour rule is extremely important right uh, and you would benefit even more if you have spent more time before you actually watch uh, the solution even then uh, maybe you don't have to watch the whole thing pause the video and try to see if you can uh, come up with the rest of the argument on your own but this one hour uh, rule is important because once you have spent a whole hour on a problem and you couldn't solve it or you didn't even have a clue on how to begin about it, with it then when you are presented the solution or the keys some hints they, they will become really valuable you will really understand the truth behind it otherwise if you you just watch a video and then watch the next one watch the next one and so on without paper pencil in your hand you are not gonna benefit as much but really the idea is you struggle first and then let's discuss and then you can watch it probably but that's kind of my recommendation obviously it's up to you how you want to do it uh, in general the way I do it is I present the problem uh, if the problem is kind of uh, relatively difficult I try to motivate by working on a few cases and then finally I solve it right so solve it uh, but the solution in no way is a unique there are probably dozens of solutions. Usually I try to um, um, present a more um, direct solution rather than indirect or more adva using advanced techniques, right? So I don't like those um, and so on. So uh, content areas, obviously there is four content areas to, uh, to uh, Olympiad math. Namely, uh, you have algebra, combinatorics, geometry and uh, number theory. Uh, I hate using advanced stuff, so that's why I usually limit uh, uh, the solutions to fundamentals. 
for instance, in um, if I'm solving a geometry problem, I would prefer synthetic techniques to using a projective or to using complex solution or a, or a barycentric coordinates type of thing. Or if I'm solving a number theory problem, I would, um, I mean, I would try to uh, just use the basic ideas, right? So I, I wouldn't want to use like quadratic reciprocity or this type of very, very advanced stuff. Huh? Uh, if I can solve it fundamentally with some uh, simple, more, uh, uh, more uh, synthetic way. Um, the difficulty level of the problems in general uh, questions one, uh, problems one and four are relatively easy questions five well when I say relatively easy for a person who have spent at least at one year of training in Olympiads uh, problems can solve these problems more or less uh, questions two and five in general are harder problems you probably need at least two years of uh, maturity in terms of Olympiad problem solving to even have I mean, to, 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 to be able to really attempt the problem. And finally, uh, questions three and sixes are usually hard. But when I say hard, um, that's also a kind of a subjective term. It, tend, uh, it turns out that the exams tend to be easier in earlier years. And for instance, questions from the 1970s and 80s, like question number fives and twos and fives from number 70s, probably in the 2000s or 2010s, and those would be equivalent to questions one and four in, in in recent years so the exam is getting harder and harder every year so there is more challenge going on and finally good resources uh, throughout the whole playlist i try to uh, stick with the notation and the solutions provided in in mainly these three books uh, which are uh, published by the mathematical association of america very good books i recommend these obviously um I assume that the the audience has more or less uh, strong fundamentals. If you are lacking the fundamentals, this is probably not a good idea to start studying from. Um, so you should probably go back to if you have difficulty in say geometry and so on. So you you are missing some of the basics. So you should probably look into like uh, pro uh, textbooks like. Uh, Evan Chan's uh, Euclidean Geometry for Math Olympians and things like that. Uh, other sources where you can first uh, make sure that you have strong foundations and then you can uh, you can look into those type of uh, books actually. Uh, ultimately, uh, the IMO forums are really, really nice. Let me say a few words about this. Eventually, the solutions presented in these books are one or two solutions like the one idea here i usually pick one solution from these books and i even try to uh, keep the notation as well so that uh, um, if in for those of you who have these books you can also follow it on your own uh, later on but the forums are awesome so in the sense that you see how many people have approached the same problem in so many different ways right so um, so that's that's really nice thing. So um, and finally, uh, I would like to say the usual disclaimer: all the errors are my own, even though I benefited heavily from these books uh, and even up to notation. So I, I, none of the solutions are my own, right? So it's uh, or original in that sense. Though in, in uh, I, I try to put some motivation into it, so that's kind of the thing which is missing in most of these books, I guess. Um, but at the end of the day, any error, which there's a lot, sometimes even logical errors while I'm solving the problems, are all my own. But I also see benefit in, in having these errors uh, presented to you as well, so that um, when you find these errors, uh, it shows a sign of maturity on your behalf, so which is good. And I, when I listen to those, or when I watch those videos later on, I, I tell myself, hey, I could have said this and I should have presented the material like this. I, I, that would have been better and so on. But then uh, that's okay. So, it's, um, so I did put the list out there. So I hope you enjoy it. So right now it's partial. Uh, but my goal is to have the complete list starting from 1959. So I'm shooting this video in the summer of 2017. So... And as the years progress, I will try to up, uh, uh, update the list. Luckily, over the, past, uh, over the last few years, there has been uh, quite a 
some people who started putting stuff like this on on youtube which is good so probably uh, i won't need to put anything beyond 2017 in fact i can probably even stop sometime at uh, i think uh, i saw people i mean there, there's great videos out there uh, for 2015 or 16 imos as well so probably i can i will stop here um and 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 we'll see um uh, Sometimes people ask me what's the next project, so probably my next project will be about creating a playlist about uh, recreational map. But let me talk about this in in another um, in another uh, video. So uh, I briefly mentioned all these: the format of the playlist, the content areas, the difficulty level, and good resources uh, out there for you guys. So I hope you enjoy the playlist, then, uh, and uh, looking forward to see you guys uh, in those lectures. Bye.